as important as your obligations as a doctor, a lawyer, a business leader will be, you are a human being first. And those human connections with spouses, with children, with friends are the most important investment you will ever make. <laughs> At the end of your life, you will never regret not having passed one more test, winning one more verdict, or not closing one more deal. You will regret time not spent with a husband, a child, a friend, or a parent. Clearly no regrets from her. Honoring a life well lived, Barbara Bush died yesterday at her home in Houston, Texas, at the age of 92. Her son, President George W. Bush, and First Lady Laura Bush remembering the former First Lady as a role model who told it like it is. She was warm and wonderful till you got out of line. <laughs> and she wasn't too warm and wonderful. Now she was awesome. She was funny and yeah. fierce and set her mind. She yeah, was a I, great role model for me, for sure. I learned how to be a First Lady. Joining me now is Kristen King Nevins, former personal aide and chief of staff to First Lady Barbara Bush. Uh, our condolences to you and everybody, not only in her immediate family, but her friends, her circle of acquaintances. I mean, she really touched the lives of everybody. And even folks who didn't know her, like me, I, mean, I had a grandmother that was like that, who was, who was as tough as nails, but had this fun side and humorous side. I hear so much of that from folks I speak to today. Gee, I had a grandmother and aunt who was just like her. Absolutely. She was one of a kind. And... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, she was certainly one of a kind, and she was, um, she, what you saw on the outside was exactly what she was on the inside. She didn't put airs on. She didn't mince words. Um, she came from a, from a generation that um, saw a lot of change in this country, and she was always upfront and honest with her thoughts, sometimes when you didn't necessarily uh, welcome them. Um, but she certainly always expressed those thoughts with love and um, in, in the, full, the full exposure of, of support and um, wanting to be honest with you so that you could, you could make the best decisions for yourself. It sounds like you're speaking from experience. Can you think of, of an example where she told you something maybe you didn't want to hear? More than more than once, actually, um, there were plenty of times when I was weighing professional decisions um, after I'd actually left her employment. And the first thing she would always ask me, because I was married at the time, is, "Well, when are you going to start a family? The most important thing you can do is 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 raise a family." So, needless to say, the first time that I was expecting, she was one of the first phone calls that I made because I knew how excited she would be for my husband and I. And and I. I assume she was, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. She, she really focused on that as the heart of anybody's life, whether you're a man or a woman, the family is at the heart. Uh, she also had this wonderful wry sense of humor. And President Bush, former President G.W. Bush, uh, spoke of that today. Let's play the tape. We had a wonderful visit. She was strong, lucid. Uh, funny, uh, still. Funny. She and I were needling each other, and the <laughs> doctor came in, and she turned to the doctor and said, you want to know why George W. is the way he is? And the doctor looked somewhat surprised. She said, because I drank and smoked when I was pregnant with you. <laughs> <laughs> right up until the end. I mean, she kept that going. Did she, did she use it uh, in her relationship with you? Absolutely. There were plenty of times where um, she, she loved to get your goat, as I'd like to say. And sometimes it was in public settings. I can remember on one such occasion, she was giving a speech in Branson, Missouri. And there was a, it was actually while her son was in office and there was a scandal going on at the White House that I was worried she was going to get a, a question about um, during the Q&A. So I took the audience questions and went through them to make sure there wasn't anything that, that you know, was going to be too controversial. And at the end of the Q&A, she turned to the audience and said, oh, come on, I know that you want to ask me about this latest topic taking place at the White House. And I know that Kristen's backstage and probably removed any question on this topic. So why don't you go ahead and ask it? She was just, there was a frankness about her. She spoke, by the way, she said uh, she wasn't always crazy about campaigning, but she'd do what she needed to do 
for her husband and her sons, whether it was GW or for a while Jeb was running. Uh, she said she'd do anything to help a Bush get elected, except I won't dye my hair, I won't change my wardrobe, and I won't lose weight. <laughs> she just, she really didn't care a lot about how she looked, but she wanted to help her sons. Absolutely. And, and there was one such occasion where she was actually speaking to a conference of plastic surgeons, and she was fearful that they were going to rush to the stage and try to get their hands on her. And she would tell anybody who would listen to make sure that nobody came on the stage and did that. <laughs> Kristen, thank you very much for coming in. We wish you the very Thanks. best, and please pass on our condolences to the Bush family, although it's a celebration more than a condolence. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Appreciate it.